This film, again, takes place at Mission College over homecoming weekend. I went to Morehouse College, which is a predominantly black college. My father went there, my grandfather went there, my mother and grandmother went to Spelman, which is across the street. So this film is really my four years at a black institution jam-packed on college weekend. Larry Fishburne, James Bond III, Bill Nunn, Dean Morrison, Brian Kamara Sides. All of that are very young. Bill Nunn went also, Bill Nunn went to Morehouse. So did Sam Jackson, they were a couple years ahead of me. Samuel L. Jackson. Black fraternities are a big thing on campuses. What we want to do with Gamma Phi Gamma is get all the worst elements of the Kappas, Qs, Alphas, all of them. And show all the ills. All these organizations. In fact, after I finished one house, a brother died pledging Alpha Phi Alpha. He had a heart problem, man. His big brothers, he was pledging big brothers. He made him do some strenuous work and his heart just gave out. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this whole attorney thing, or sorority for that matter. It always amazed me the amount of abuse and punishment people put up with just to belong to a group, to any organization. Broken limbs, I mean, they would fuck you up. They do with paddles, all types of stuff, just so they belong to an organization. As I said before, we shot this film the support of this at my alma mater, Morales College, but after three weeks we were kicked off campus. The president of the school then felt that this film was going to be a negative image of a black higher, insti black higher institutions of education and uh, kicked us off campus. I had a problem with who we cast for the school president. That gentleman right there, Joe Seneca. I'm ashamed to say it, but he said that Joe looked too much like a Sambo. So, in a lot of ways, the stuff that we were trying to deal with in the film was happening to us at the same time we were making the film. And in fact, after this film came out, even before after this film came out, I wasn't really invited to come back to Morehouse for several years. Really until uh, the guy was president and left. But now I'm on the board of trustees, so everything's it's been a long while. But that was really hurtful at the time, you know, coming back to the school where you went. The school where you really became a man and then giving you the boot, saying we don't want you anymore. Hi, this is G. Craig Lewis here uh, with another edition of our podcast, the EX Cast, here at EX Ministries, where we give you the truth, uh, uncut and unedited, just the truth of the Word of God as it applies to our lives for today. I have with me here a uh, minister of the gospel, Minister Fred Hatchett from Carolina. How you doing, Fred? I'm blessed. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing real good. It's good to have you here. And uh, I believe the information you have is very important to some things that are kind of going untalked about in our churches, especially the black church. But in churches as a whole, there's just some things that people are doing that needs to be uh, dealt with, I believe, by ministry. And uh, one of them is the subject of our uh, uh, discussion today, which is about Greek letter fraternities and sororities and organizations of the source. Now, you've done extensive research on the subject and on this matter, and uh, that's why I believe in calling resident experts in who I believe God has gifted with information. And you're one of those. Um, so just to kind of get started, kind of give me some background information 
on, uh, uh, you know, how you even got involved in uh, Greek letter organizations. Initially in 1986, um, I tried to pledge Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. I was given uh, a letter of rejection due to the fact that I voiced my opinion about uh, the rigors of the pledging process, not necessarily the paddling and everything else, but I, I brought up the subject of broken bones and I said that I would not put up with uh, such brutality. And due to that fact, uh, I was rejected. Four years later, I joined the grad chapter of Omega Psi Phi fraternity in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, and then a year later, I joined the uh, Prince Hall Freemasonry. In 1992, I denounced Prince Hall Freemasonry due to the fact that some scriptures I read in Ezekiel about Satan and how they and how he was likened unto uh, the son of the morning and how the prince of Tyrus was likened unto Satan. So therefore, uh, I denounced for that reason. I wasn't even saved at the time, but I did realize that the devil was in, in Freemasonry. Well, uh, in 19 well, hold on, hold on, Fred. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, getting involved in Freemasonry, what, what made you want to get involved in that? In 1990, I joined Omega Psi Phi. And generally, the progression from Greek letter fraternities is into Freemasonry. So it, at this point, I was not even born again. Uh -huh. uh, so wanting to go into Freemasonry, I desired what, what most people call more light, or I, I had a demonic desire to know more, and Freemasonry claimed to have more information than just the fraternities and sororities. So in a sense, you could call it, uh, it was out of pride that I desired to know more than, than what than the than the light that I uh, had acquired in the fraternity alone. Okay, so when you speak of light, and just for our listeners, because you're you're talking, you're using terminology that I guess belongs in the uh, secret organizations. But I mean, in your quest for light, I mean, what kind of light are we just talking about? Light of information, or light of prosperity, or secrets to the afterlife? I mean, what? what Kind of break that down. What what is the light that you were chasing? Okay. When there, whenever there's a proclamation of light, then there must be a manifestation of that light which is given, and the light is just some secret knowledge that the organization contains. You don't know it at the time, and you must go through a uh, process in which to obtain that light. And what you find out is that the light is not the light of Christ. It's not the light that John spoke of in in. Uh, John 1 9 where he said I am not that light but he preceded that light the true light which was to come which was Jesus Christ so it's just simply knowledge about things that human beings have come up with through the eons of time so you know and I'm just trying to get a good understanding for everyone that's listening so you mean that people actually in their quest for knowledge and there's actually a quest for a light that they really know nothing about. I mean, it's because it's secret. You just go through all of these, uh, you know, different things, hazings and different things. Uh, even the initiation process for Freemason, you go through this seeking a light that you're really not that familiar with. Is that what you're saying? You're actually seeking a light that you have absolutely no knowledge oh, of. Oh, man. And, and, and when you come into their light, there's this, always a sentence that precedes that. You have now come out of darkness into the Shekinah light of Omega, so to speak. So not only do they claim, some organizations claim to have light, they claim that it is godly light or heavenly, heavenly light or heavenly glory. And the only way to come out of darkness into the marvelous light is through their organization. And, and when you do a study of the Egyptian mystery schools or uh, ancient Babylon uh, systems and even Western African systems, there was always some kind of truth that the sages or the, or the wise people claimed to have and that the only way you could obtain that information was through them. Mm. So, okay. Now, they're saying that there, th th there's a secretive life. So, I mean, it's almost like, you know, this is kind of mimicking Christianity or an organized religion. 
it it not only mimics Christianity, but it, it perverts it to the point that they believe that you must sacrifice yourself to achieve their light, whereas Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and he sacrificed himself for us. So you really have a, a severe perversion of the gospel, wherein you have a gospel of works in these secret organizations, whereas Christians believe that we come to, to Jesus Christ through faith alone, not of works. Mm. And there's a lot of boasting. And, and right where it says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, there is a lot of boasting by members of fraternities, fraternities and sororities as to the things that they have done, the things that they have accomplished. But when one looks at them in the light of Christ, we see that the light they claim to give is truly darkness. Uh, an, an example is fraternities and sororities have been have been used in the abortion movement they have been used in the homosexual movement they have been they have been used in every movement that got of things that God detests what do you mean being used how, how, how have they been used Margaret Margaret Sanger is basically the originator of Planned Parenthood in, in America so what she did she had something called the Negro Project she knew that if the abortion movement was instituted in the black community as population control that it would never get through. So she, what she did was she used black preachers and prominent black individuals to bring the message to the, to, to the, to her, what she would deem quote unquote, lower class black people, lower class individuals, period. She wanted, she wanted them to bring the message to them to ease their minds and to have some trust in, in these people. So she used an individual, an AKA, she was the 10th Grand Boss of the sorority at the time to present the Negro Project or birth control to the black community in a way that they would receive it and accept it. But what she did not, may, have, may, may or may not have known was that Margaret Sanger was in, intended to rid the world basically of the black race and of any other race that she's that she deemed uh, barbaric through eugenics through eugenicism which is basically genocide so gen, genetic genocide so when you say she now now I've, I've spoken about this in one of my thing and the legal thing of reporting it Instead, they will just ignore. Mm, so, so, I mean, you have to have a certain level of compromise going on to even even try to remain in it and not um, not be a part of it or not be a part of the things that are against Christianity. In, in, in all honesty, you cannot be a full-fledged member and a born-again Christian at the same time because, as the Bible says, you cannot serve two masters. And, and in, in, in my 11 years of being denounced, I've never seen somebody who who claimed to be born again and was in a fraternity or sorority full fledged love God more and the fraternity less and hate the wow. fraternity. There's always been there's always there always will be a level of compromise because when you can ignore doctrines such as uh, the universal brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God, which makes Jesus and Buddha equal. Now, what is that? Wait. What, what, what? <laughs> Okay, now where did you get that from? The Universal Brotherhood of Man and the Fatherhood of God is a doctrine taught by Omega Psi Phi, but they got it from Freemasonry. In Freemasonry, there the God of the Lodge is called the Great Architect of the Universe. And when you go into a lodge, you can't bring Jesus into the lodge. You can't bring Buddha into the lodge. You can't bring Jehovah into the lodge. When you when you go into the lodge, all of the all of those gods and your Jesus come under the one, the one creator, the great architect. Isn't that Osiris? Oh, <laughs> that's correct. When, when you walk, when you walk into the in, into the Freemason, Freemasonry lodge, you have the eye of Osiris sitting right in right in the east. It is the, the Masonic temple is built exactly opposite of King Solomon's temple. Oh wow! Me, and if you go to Ezekiel eight sixteen, it discusses how. The men of Israel were facing east. They had their back toward the Ark of the Covenant, facing east, worshiping the sun. And that's exactly what the Masonic Temple represents. Because mm. I know guys, I know pastors and preachers that wear, have the Mason rings on and different things. So you're telling me that 
you can't take Jesus or any, I mean, do they specifically say that, that you can't bring them into the lodge? Some lodges specifically state that. Now, you will have lodges where guys will pray in the name of Jesus, but it, it's pretty uh, oxymoronic to do such a thing, and the eye of Osiris is sitting right there in the mm -hmm. east. And that eye is also known sometimes as the third eye, and then it's known as, yeah, because I, I mm -hmm. heard Steve Harvey at the Mega Fest, uh, comedy junk that they recorded <laughs> and he, he kept referring to right. his third eye and then I've dealt with that in my videos and that's that same eye right okay so that's correct basically you're at such a place emotionally or mentally where you you feel you need either the attention of an organization you need to be lifted up by men or the accolades or affirmation of men so much that you would turn your back either momentarily or for good to the true and living God who's supposed to be the source of that. You turn your back to that and actually replace the love of God and God's uh, purpose for your life with your own will or your own man-made destiny. Is that kind of what, what this whole process is about? That's correct. And and you, you see that in, in there, there's a song called all of my love, my peace and happiness, I will give to my fraternity or sorority, whichever one it is. And th and this song is sung by Christians. And, and if they don't participate, see, the thing about fraternities and sororities is you are called upon in your oath to participate, to, to remain financial, uh, to do community service. So when, but when a fraternity or sorority has a party and you as a Christian say, well, I'm not going to be a part of that uh, program. Well, then you're, then you're not really holding true to what you uh, took an oath to. It's kind of like taking, you know, when you give your life to Christ and you say, well, I'm only going to serve you halfway or 75% of the way. I'm not going to serve you completely. And I'm talking about willfully not serving God completely. So you're basically saying that there is absolutely really no way you can be a born again, true to God believer and be a part of one of these organizations. <laughs> now, That's give me thing. some reasons why. And that, because, you know, a lot of people are going to hear this. A lot of parents, their kids want to pledge. I know folks that, you know, I mean, they, they, they're they friends with people that pledge or they encourage people to pledge or they're a part of it. And they, But they, you know, nobody ever gives them reasons why they shouldn't because you know it's just been going on for so long people do it so i want you to give me now now tell me just what would you tell somebody that's saying hey i want to pledge and uh you know why why can't a christian pledge in a, in, a, in one of these organizations i would tell somebody not to join if they're not willing to tell you what their secrets are about because i, I don't believe a christian should go into anything with their eyes closed mm. And, and that's why I, I have a, a series of questions for Christian aspirants to ask at, at like the interest meeting where you go and find out about the fraternity. And I tell Christian aspirants that they should ask, you know, I want to know what your secret rituals are, are about. Oh, so that, that, well, let, let's stop there because I want to make sure people hear this. So you have you have compiled some questions that you give people that are aspiring to pledge to go in and ask these questions and if they can be answered uh then or they'll give them the answer and then you'll basically show how you know this is something that a christian shouldn't get involved in is that what you're saying that's correct i'm talking about asking questions that are going to make them mad <laughs> that you will see that that you, <laughs> that that demonic spirit will manifest when you ask them certain questions because when when kids get to campus it's amazing how they are already in fear of how to act around these people before they even uh want to join sex with men or do something degrading and now even in the gangs in la they're doing homosexual acts and performing acts you know it's like a humiliation which gives i guess whoever's over you some kind of self-righteous or i mean self uh glorification or fleshly glorification or something and so that's what i've always seen it as and even when i was in college i did i never wanted to pledge because i didn't want to humiliate myself i felt like they were asking me to humiliate myself to get involved in something and i just did you know i just felt like i didn't need it 
but I know a lot of people did it, and I know a lot of people that did it are still in their minds coming out of it. I mean, you got to cast demons out of them. You got to break the curses of the brands that's on them. I mean, it's like if they the, the more time they spend in there, the more messed up spiritually and mentally and emotionally they get, and it doesn't all come out until they decide to make that true commitment to Christ and turn their back on it and denounce it. It's like all hell breaks loose inside of them i i personally had to deal with it when, when i came out uh i had such an attachment <laughs> who may not believe it but i had such an attachment attachment to a paddle that that was the only piece of paraphernalia that i that i kept after i originally gave, gave up the fraternity and i was making all kinds of excuses crazy excuses like well i'm just going to keep keep the the paddle and you know when my boys get grown and uh, and, and I'm disciplining them, you know, I'll use the paddle. But what happened was I had a dream uh, where a dog was sitting on the on the edge of, of my bed with its teeth growling. And the only thing I could do was say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I got up in my dream, grabbed the dog and, and threw it against the wall and it broke. As soon as I woke up, I grabbed that paddle and broke it. So that was that was my demonic manifestation that i had to deal with when i came out and once and once that was done i was completely free and once i was completely free that's when god god asked me am i ready to be persecuted mm. i've dealt with it with people with brands and brands heating up on people's bodies and you know those kind of weird things from different organizations and i guess you know it just i guess false god worship to me always carries a curse anytime if the bible says if anyone comes and preaches anything to you let that man be a curse so i believe that you know it just carries a curse man and and i, I believe that's why i'm talking to you now because i want the young people that come to our website young people that come to listen to the xcast i want them to know what they're getting into it's not just a de decision that you can make on a whim and not have to deal with some kind of spiritual consequence am i right about that you're right. There, there's, there's going to be a spiritual consequence, whether, whether the hazing process occurs or not, because the rituals, you, you'll see the wording in the rituals, such as of omega, two omega, four delta, four, four phi beta sigma, words that that put you in allegiance to the organization. Everything centers around the organization. It has nothing to do with God. When, when you're joining organizations that compare the suicide of Socrates to the death of Jesus on the cross and call it God, there's something wrong there. When, when a sorority or fraternity says that, you know, we leave it to the individual to choose whatever spiritual path that they want to go. So right there you have, you have ecumenicalism, meaning that uh, whatever God you serve is whatever God you serve. We're not going to be concerned with that. All you have to do is believe in the supreme being to be a part of our organization. So now you're you're unequally yoked with unbelievers. You're, une you're unequally yoked with people who, who believe in, in Allah. You have Muslim members of these Greek organizations that claim to be founded upon Christian principles. But they're not founded upon Christian principles. They're founded under the premise of you do good, you can go to heaven. And they do teach in their in their rituals that if you're a good Omega or a good Alpha, you're going to go to a place of rest. You're going to go to the Omega chapter. Your name is going to be written in the Golden Book, which I've never seen in the Bible. But all for all for being a member of that organization. So I mean, I mean, not, I'm, we're going to close with this, but. Hi, uh, this is G. Craig Lewis with EX Ministries here with another uh, installment of our EX cast. It's our podcast now. We're also on iTunes and you can subscribe to it, get it downloaded, downloaded in your iPod as well. But we're here with uh, our X cast where we give, the, give, give you the truth, give it uncut, unedited, just the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. This is our part two of our um kind of our talk about greek fraternities and sororities and greek letter organizations uh and here i have a woman of god who has been gifted in this area has a lot of information has a, a book out and is really just trying to help sisters and brothers uh to make a smart 
spiritual Christ-like decision before they step into something that they'll regret later. Her name is Gail Gray. How you doing, Gail? I'm doing fine. Elder Lewis, how are you? I'm doing real good. It's good to have you here. Uh, we, yes. we know that you've got the information. Your book is awesome. And I just want the people to really get Thank a good, good understanding of, of, of what it is that God doesn't like about these Greek fraternities and sororities. Exactly. <laughs> but kind of, uh, before we get started, just kind of give some of your background information. How did you uh, get involved in this area of ministry? Praise the Lord. Uh, I just want to say it's a blessing to uh, be a part of this ministry. It, um, it's just an awesome opportunity to spread the truth of God's word. Uh, I've always been uh, partial to the truth of God's word. I've always loved God's word since I was a little kid. Um, I just reverenced the Lord. Uh, grew up in the church, uh, but went off to college, you know, with just a limited amount of information uh, in that area because I grew up in a place where, uh, you know, Greek letter organizations was really big. It's like if you made it uh, in society, that just came along with the, the package, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I grew up seeing it. Uh, my teachers, you know, I, you know, most of the teachers, male and female, you know, that's what they did mm -hmm. and you know they sort of recruited you as a high schooler and you just were expected to do that if you were going to college but um uh, i did pledge uh, alpha kappa alpha sorority always wanted to pledge that sorority there was no other sorority for me um in my uh heart and i did pledge and um i was going on about my business having a good time and uh god had a, a different plan for me about Four years ago, I denounced AKA, uh, quite to my surprise, actually. It's something I never thought uh, would ever happen. Never thought that, uh, you know, I would dream of uh, letting go of what we call the pink and green. But uh, God had a plan for my life because he knew that uh, if given the choice, if the choice was like just put in my face, that I would choose him. Mm -hmm. And that's, he knew that he, tr he could trust me with that with that choice and uh, i don't want to get off the topic but that whole thing about free will i mean it comes up well we have our own free will and i'll be the first one to say yes you do have your own free will god's not going to force his will on you but that's why i'm in the position i'm in now because he can trust me to make the right choice not my will but your will be done and I, that was my prayer mm -hmm. just as jesus prayed mm -hmm. and it's just like he can trust jesus with that choice mm -hmm. but um what really it, it hit me uh, like a ton of bricks when a young lady uh, walked up to me and gave me a chick gospel track. It's in the book. I wrote about this somewhere in the oh, first three Jack, chapters of the book. That's a Jack Chick. Chick. Jack Chick that's, from that's Eng out of England. That's my man. That's my man. Out of England. Yeah. It gave, she gave me a, a 11 year old girl gave me a gospel track. <laughs> you know, he said he's a, he, you know how God says about the children. Mm -hmm. They'll do anything. They, you know, he tells them to do. Mm -hmm. and she gave it to me and uh, I read it and it was about the the curse of Baphomet. Oh yeah. Never heard of it before. Never seen one of these gospel tracks before. Grew up in a church, but you know, I, I just was not privy to that side of ministry. Got tracks, we just didn't do tracks. Mm -hmm. And um, and I read it, and of course, it was about a young man who uh, had tried to commit suicide or something. And the parents were masons, and uh, the doctor was a friend of the father and said, you know, hey, this is a spiritual condition going on here. Your son is getting into all kinds of uh, demonic things because of your your connection to the Masonic order and your wife's connection to the Eastern stars. This was a chick, jack shit gospel. Oh, track. yeah. Okay. I've got that. I was like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And that thing just hit me because I'm partial to the word of God. Mm -hmm. It hit me. You know, I'm like, okay, what is up with this? I mean, why do I feel kind of funny about this thing? You know, because I never really knew uh, of a connection with Greek letter organizations and um, masonry. So actually, I sort of started doing my research just to make sure that there was no connection to sort of like disprove, you know, any, you know, connection. But the more I researched and talked to people, even Greeks, they were like, oh, yeah. 
you know, there was a connection, but you know, we just don't acknowledge it now because the, the years have been so few, I mean, so far between now, it's just irrelevant. I was like, no, that's what you think. <laughs> if you know anything about spiritual matters and spiritual laws of God and familiar spirits, no, it's not mm -hmm. over and done with. Mm -hmm. You know, the more and more I research, the more and more valid I found the connection to be between Greek letter organizations and the Masonic order. Hmm. I mean, it's it's it was that was sort of the easy part. Wow. So then I, I I knew then, coupled with the incident with the two young ladies who were trying to pledge the sorority that I was a member of at the time, uh, I believe that was four years ago as well. All this was happening at the same time. The, the Jack Chick gospel track and the drowning of the young women at Cal State who were trying to pledge AKA and they drowned together out in the Pacific Ocean. Now, how, how, did, how, how did they drown? <clears throat> well, they were uh, performing a unity ritual out in the Pacific Ocean. It was, I don't know how many girls were online at that particular time. Somewhere between five and seven girls were online and they had gone out into the Pacific Ocean at night uh, to perform some unity ritual. And two of the girls were washed away uh, uh, in the current and drowned. One of them was a really good swimmer. Um, her name was Kristen High. She was an accomplished swimmer, but she was trying to help out one of the other pledges, um, Kanitha Safir, I believe is the last name. And she died trying to help her out. But um, Kristen High's mother, who, I, who I, I've been in contact with, um, said that her daughter was a very good swimmer and actually knew of some things that her daughter was involved in and had been encouraging her to possibly, you know, detach herself from those activities but you know of course that happened and it was too late but um and what really hit me was the this professional sorority uh the basilis at the time stood up and said we don't have a chapter at cal state uh i don't know of any uh pledges that were legitimately going through a pledge or initiation process there and i was like oh my god these girls are dead and that's all she had to say wow. You know, and that just hit me because, you know, I just have a heart for, for just people, period. You know, God just made me that way. Mm -hmm. And I love the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. And whether she was saved or not, the sorority that I was supposed to be representing stood up and said, we don't know anything about a line there. There shouldn't have been anything going on. That might have been true. But somebody's dead here. Can somebody just please stand up and acknowledge something, any wrongdoing? And they flat out. And I was like, well, you know, I, I just, I can't be a part of that. Not as a Christian one. Wow. wow. I, I can't. I, you know, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm responsible as a Christian woman. I'm responsible for what goes on. Wow. In, in the body of Christ, that's why I'm here now. I'm responsible for what goes on in the organization that I, I pledge myself to. Well, how, how did you get out? What did you do to get out? Well, I, you some organizations, they actually write a formal letter of denunciation. Uh, some people write letters and some people just do what I did. Just, you know, repent turn away and don't go back again That's yeah what I, I guess do. what I was trying to get at was if they recognize I mean if they actually send you or rec and you give that allegiance that you should have to God to the organization they put themselves in scripture yeah that's what Fred when yeah. he went over some of those where they take scripture and you, you know fill in their name kind of you know oh and, yeah and they don't think anything of it. They what they think they're doing is making it holy, yeah. making it all right with yeah. God. But it can't be all right with God when you got scripture on one page and you talking about uh, we are the favorite of the gods on another page. Little G O D S. Mm. Yeah, that sounds like holy hip hop. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it yeah. I mean, we we're we're choosing um, to. Uh, associate ourselves with um, the Ethiopians because they were the special favorite of the gods. That's Alpha Phi Alpha wow. Fraternity. Okay, you say that on one page, but then on another page, you you praying, you know, you praying a prayer 
to God and you saying that you're the light of the world. Your organization is the light of the world. Hello? Right. There's only one light. <laughs> and you can't see what's wrong with that? Well, we only said it one time. It ain't that serious. God says he's placed before us life and death. It's in your mouth. What you speak in makes wow. all the difference. I mean, this is so absurd. And this message, and I want people to understand, you know, this is to the body of Christ. I know there are some people that may not have accepted Christ, and you won't understand what we're talking about until, they uh, won't understand. until you accept Christ. And I'm glad you interjected that because I wanted to make that crystal clear as well. This this message is for the body of of Christ. It has been from the beginning mm -hmm. because I didn't get this message until I became a part of the body of Christ. When I was out there in the world dying every day, I was blind to this. Having grown up in the church, I was still blind to this. You know, but you have to get information and God will add revelation to that information. Right, right. Oh, it's good to get information. That's all good. Study. God, God is down with studying. Mm -hmm. But I, I dare you to study His Word. Right. Now that's that's. I dare you to study His now Word. That's what folks. Because if you keep reading books, you know, different books, especially like the Purpose Driven Life and books like that, they basically give you Christ in what you're already in. So it's like there's mm -hmm. never a coming out of what you're doing. There's never a separating yourself, sanctifying yourself wholly. Mm. And that's what it's all yeah, about. It, Sanctification. It's always about what you're doing, what you want to do, your goals, your plan, you know, what you feel God's purpose is for. And so it just kind of keeps the Bible at bay and we'll pull the good stuff out, but we'll leave the whole part of dying to yourself and dying to your flesh. We'll leave that part out. Gotcha. But uh, you Got but, you. but there is a um I, I want to know i mean i want to know now who are some of the ministers or people that you know that are actually greeks uh, you know that you done in your research and you found out i was surfing the uh, web once and um uh, maybe about two years ago and i saw that uh pastor uh bryant was a kappa and uh pastor jamal bryant yeah oh. he was a kappa alpha psi and uh fraternity mm. and i was watching this show once and i saw uh, just very very strange uh, chair on his altar that had looks like it had uh, some egyptian symbols carved in it oh gosh and this was some years ago i haven't seen it you know but i was like looking at the tv like man wait is that what i think it is i'm looking i'm not I can't, i'm not even looking at him i'm trying to look at this chair I was like, man, that can't be what I think it is. I went on the website. That that's what you know caused me to go on his website. And when I saw that, I think I shot him over an email or something. And uh, he took that part out of his bio that he was a kappa. But at the time, I was. I don't know why the Holy Spirit told me to look for pastors or ministers who were in this thing. And, uh, you know, and all I could do was sort of, you know, go on their websites and see if they had their bio. At that time, he's the only one that I saw that actually had in his bio. Gosh. He's since taken it out. But, um. And sitting in a church. See, because there's a church out here in Dallas, uh, Pastor Freddie Haynes. It's a church, uh, Friendship West Baptist Church. And he's an alpha. And you talking about just a chair with Jamal Bryant. This guy has three pyramids sitting on top of his church, and he has an ankh in his baptism, a giant ankh. And he has. And see, I don't understand. And he has an ankh on every seat in the church. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean, it's church seats like three, four thousand people. I mean, it's a humongous. Oh, it's just God. a big monument, and he packs it out. It, that makes me ill. I mean, it makes me want to cry. I'm well, serious. It don't make me want to cry. It makes me want to. No, I mean, it's sad that that people are being led astray. You know, in such an awesome manner. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's know, really sad that we, as a people, you know, we deem, and what I think, we deem anything that's black as something that exactly. we, must, we must defend because must and we have to yeah, embrace yeah, it and because was century and that's really what the whole Greek thing is tied to. When it's all said and done, no matter what they say, it, it's all tied to Egyptology. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we've a few of us have made that connection in our research. Yeah, they have the Greek this and the Greek that. Some of the gods they mention are Greek. You know, some of the gods are Roman, like Minerva. Mm -hmm. You know, why is Minerva Roman? But the deltas were these big pyramids. Everybody knows right. what those are. Those are right. tombs. Why are you wearing tombs for the pharaohs? Right. They ain't gotta explain that to you. Hey, hey that's okay. That's all right. But you were in tombs for the pharaohs, but in Egypt, but Minerva is Roman, but you wear Greek letters. How many different places did you get this from? You just piece it together. Well, it's kind of like Kwanzaa, you know, it's just somebody started doing it and saying it, and then everybody embraced it without doing their own research and finding out where it came from. And now we finding out Kwanzaa was something just made up, you know. Did you know that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I heard about that. And I'm just right into the Kwanzaa thing. Even when I was, you know, an AKA, Kwanzaa just didn't sit well with me. I don't know. And AKA sat well with me because I, I willed it in my flesh. It was, my, it was the will of my flesh to be an AKA. And that's what we really have to be careful of because you'll hear people say, well, I prayed to the Lord and this, that was my that's answer. That's the dumbest thing. You know, but people have to realize that the will of the flesh is powerful. Right, right. You know, it is powerful. That's what Jesus had to say, all right, not my will. I dare, I dare anybody who's thinking about pledging and praying about it to say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. To pray that in honesty. I bet you they won't get up and say, well, you know, God said I can do it. No, he won't. Not if you let your will go. Because it's not God's will. This is not God's and, will. For and the and Gail, one thing I've I've learned is some stuff don't need no prayer because the Bible said it's set against it. See, see what? Yes, it does.